For some time, I felt like I was losing myself. Like life was unfolding itself like a thick, pink grapefruit skin. I could feel the sticky citrus juice getting stuck beneath my fingernails without ever tasting it. We would hop from crisis to crisis like timid frogs, never trusting and receiving slaps of retribution from the wasteful and angry sky. Two days ago you left, and I found myself in a cluttered parking lot of my brain, besides an incomprehensibly vivid bowl of cherries in an algal green pool. There are garbage trucks rumbling in the distance, wet and September suffering seeping into your now cold Earl Grey tea. I am here, I remind myself, my phone being the only window to a world slipping out of being. This was all before I welcomed myself into the body of my expulsion. The senescence of my cells in a stale car, screaming for mercy as my eyes fluttered closed and I forgot about the expansiveness of time and space. There is no direction, only the abusive screaming of some person that is myself. There is no escape either, I believed. The world is too bright and fast, slow and angry. The universe looks at me and shrugs, offering a small handful of naked pistachios and not much else. I have an unborn self, practically a child, clawing in the pit of my stomach for some greater vision. She's all hair and teeth, forgotten ovaries, a conjunctive genetic failure. It's too bright outside and there are no lessons to be learned. I don't know what to make of the sky now that I'm alone. It feels heavenly, but I don't really know what heaven should feel like. I suck on limes to avoid the shock of the iridescent. I go on long walks by a stream I know well. Life goes on and on. I'm not cajoled into the pine trees, and there are no radical new forms of rearrangement. The state of revelation has not lodged itself into my state of being. I thought that when I would return to describe it, the words would flow into stained glass, that all the suffering would chisel itself into ice sculptures, and I could get drunk at dusk, filling my cup beneath the waterfall. Instead, it all comes in whispers and muttering cacti, an unassuming wreckage where the sun seems blissfully ignorant of the passage of time. In the desert of expulsion, sand thrashes in the wind and lands beneath my eyelids like glass insects. The sand fears nothing. I fear everything. Set straight my crooked ways, wring out my memories, Leave my mind laundry fresh, sopping wet hair, and a heart that won't stop ringing.